Hello, hello, everyone. We are live. I'm your girl, Tamara Travels, your trusted travel coach from the Travel Love Agency, here to help you unlock the greatest your greatest travel potential. And welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, today, you guys, I am so excited. I have uh, professional travel agents with me. Miss Samantha and Miss Tanya are in the building. Miss Connie may log on with us as well. We're going through some hot travel topics of this week. Samantha, welcome to my show. How are you, my dear? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for you as well. And Miss Tanya is in the building. Uh, what is it like uh, in your travel universe? What's going on right now, Miss Tanya? Hey, guys. It's going wonderful right now. Um, just finished up a busy, busy summer with a bunch of travelers. I even traveled with them. Looking forward to planning some awesome adventures with your girl. So keep it locked, guys. I am so excited. It is an incredible time right now. Um, and we're just going to jump in right into some information. We know it's busy. We know we got passports, information flying all the world around the world. But we're going to talk about first um, Travel and Leisure did this little survey and they love to tell us what are the best of the best in traveling. So we're just going to go through this list and kind of see what we say about all of this, because I got some beef with Travel and Leisure. I'll just be honest about it. So Travel and Leisure um, named the best airports and how they chose these airports, you guys, is they determine the accessibility, the check-in, the security points, the restaurants, the bars, the shopping, and the design. And they came up with the top 10 list. Now, um, I'm going to be real funny right now and just tell you that out of the top 10, I've never heard of many of these. Um, I think number one they listed is Manchester, which is in Boston, um, uh, Indianapolis, Tampa, and Minnesota, St. Paul. And we're going to pause right there because that's just the top four. Now, ladies, do you all have an airport that you know that exceeds that, um, that is easy to navigate for your customers, um, that gives a, a easy flow to the security checkpoints, that has great restaurants or shopping? What do you take? What's your take, Samantha? What do you think? Yeah, so that list is interesting to me. Um, my favorite airport will actually probably surprise people, but it's for a good reason. I love Atlanta Airport. It is gigantic. That's surprising. But it's so huge. Very. I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like for how gigantic it is, they do the best that they possibly can. I'm in California and we have LAX, which is also huge and horrible. So I really <laughs> appreciate Atlanta Airport. And just the fact that you can like take the metro to go into the city if you have a long layover there's a spa there's really good food i i know it might not be like the top list but for what it is it's amazing i love that um i actually i gotta piggyback on that a little bit even though i have a different choice um, I think Atlanta Airport is like a mall with planes. I think it is incredible for what it needs to do. Um, it is a very busy place and they do the doggone thing. Um, now, it's always fun to me. Um, I Years ago, just to be funny, I recorded just a little video while I was sitting in the food court just to watch the individuals go by. And I went back and watched that video. And I promise it was not only an airport, but it served as great entertainment. <laughs> Miss Tanya, what airport would you say sticks out to you the most that you love sending customers and clients to? Well, whenever, especially if I'm working on Caribbean tours, I, you know, I got to touch on Florida. I really love how MCO transitions their people. I love the smooth access. I love the transitioning and everything like that. Um, Atlanta, y'all. Oh my God, I get my my ADHD kicks in in Atlanta. I'm like, oh my God, it's too much going on. It's too much going on. Oh my God, it's so, a lot going on. Atlanta a is a very busy place. Uh -huh. It's a lot, and and to be honest with you, I avoid layovers in Atlanta. I will bypass that because of that. <laughs> because if I feel like that, I know my clients are gonna be like, what the heck, you know? So I try to get them in a place that is not too much going on because i want to make mm. sure they make their flights guys we all know you got to be well at first to maneuver through atl so yeah that's, that's just my take on it 
I think with Atlanta having the the train system, the gate changes often, I mean, it's huge, so you can expect that. Um, but they are pushing out a lot of travel in a timely manner. Uh, but just to piggyback on what you said, Tanya, I love Savannah Hilton Head for that. It is small, it is quaint, it is comfortable. It's almost, it's it's fitting and suitable for the layout of the land for Savannah Hilton Head area. Most people are going there to kind of relax, decompress, a vacation, kind of a girl's trip, kind of low key relax. And their airport matches that, oddly enough. And and Samantha, okay. to, to you saying um, that about Atlanta Airport, I think that matches the city as well. <laughs> no <laughs> one named LAX. I'm wondering why. <laughs> Not the worst, but definitely not the best. Now you know why. <laughs> I love that though. What did you say, um, Tanya? What did you say? I say you know, you know why. You know why LAX is I do not know on the I do know why. <laughs> okay, ladies, thank you for that insight. Now, when it comes to beating the heat this summer, um, I really want to know. I, we're not going to stop traveling just because it's hot, but we know on record it has been the hottest season um, that we can possibly experience in North America. It's been really hot. What travel advice or advice are you giving you all's clients to make sure that they're beating the heat and staying safe? Miss Tanya. Well, whenever we're traveling to the Caribbean, you know, I want to make sure that my people are prepared for that Caribbean heat. I'm a Texas chick, so Texas is an oven hot, okay? So our humidity here is completely, uh, it's different. But when you travel to the Caribbean, their hot is different as well. So I want to make sure my people are aware of that, even though you may be a Texan or a Southerner, that 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 Caribbean heat hits a whole lot different. Um, and thus people are coming back with different tan lines and, you know, sandal marks on their feet because, hey, we didn't put any sunblock on our feet, you know. Right. So you got to be sure that if you want to travel to the Caribbean, just protect yourself at all time from the top of your head to the to the bottom of your feet. Guys, put that sunblock on. Um, you may not think you're going to need it in the Caribbean, but trust me, you do. And you Absolutely. must stay hydrated. I think the article talked about uh, making sure you hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Yes, this is very important. You need to stay hydrated, especially when you're traveling in warm climates. Mm -hmm. Samantha, what would you like to add to that? Thank you, Tanya. That was wonderful. Yeah, I totally agree. So I have so many clients in Europe right now, Western Europe, and they're horrible heat wave happening. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and kind of just go back to the 101 of sun safety, sunscreen, water, all of that, but also just don't push yourself. A lot of clients in Europe are visiting those touristy places. They wanna see everything they possibly can in a few days, but you don't wanna push yourself one day and mess up the rest of your trip. So just sure. you know, pace yourself, do what you can, but also really listen to your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. And um, how I would answer that as well. Absolutely. Every point you all hit on is correct. Um, how I would add to that is like I work with a lot of group trips and I always tell the groups or we create plans for more of the evening. Uh, we don't really do a lot in the rise of the summer heat mm -hmm. uh, of the middle of the day. 12 noon, uh, we're not doing a lot. I don't think that's a good time for groups to move around. That may be a good time to be at the pool or to have a late brunch or something like that. But just being mindful and planning out your travel day. Um, I think one other thing I always like to add is, um, and this is a tricky subject because vacation for many people means doing everything you don't do at home. That means drinking a little bit more, eating a little bit more, drinking a lot less water. I think being mindful of what your body actually needs and listening to yourself. Am I dehydrated? Is my skin cracking? Am I thirsty a lot? And just pivoting as much as possible, traveling with water as you're touring through Europe, those kind of things. Or the Caribbean, I absolutely love, but I've been burnt by that sun numerous times. <laughs> um, and just taking use of the facilities that are available to you. If there is some sunshade or a, a break that you can take out of the sun or even in the Caribbean. I love the um, in the um, all inclusives. They have the areas that you can go just to spray on sunscreen a little bit more. Like I love right. that. 
those things have to be utilized. They're not there just for fun. They're there to help you have the, a great rest of your va vacation just because you haven't overdone it on day one, two, through three. Um, so that is great tips. Thank you, guys. Um, the other topic that always comes up and we have to discuss, always going to be the monkey in the room with traveling, especially in the U.S. Um, tra uh, passport delays. Um, real issue. The U.S. State Department is pushing uh, 400,000 applications a week. Um, you guys, all I could really say about this um, is try to pivot as much as possible. If you cannot get a passport and don't have one as of today, you're late. Um, it's time to do this and maybe planning forward for next year. Um, don't put yourself in a predicament where uh, you've planned this trip, you need to go, and you don't have your passport ready. I say at this point, and this is my personal advice that I would give to my clients, is this is a time to see the great rest of America. <laughs> um, this is a time to maybe grab a passport card and do some trips by land or by boat. Maybe this is not the time to go to Europe if you don't have a passport as of today. Uh, the average time period for passports, the U.S. State Department is saying is 10 to 13 weeks and expedited is seven to nine. Um, I'm seeing a little bit longer than that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Tanya, what would you like to add to that? Well, I've made a video on my YouTube channel um, explaining how to walk my clients through obtaining a passport and why you need to do it early. Um, if you're contacting us and saying, hey, we wanted to go somewhere in November, I'm going to ask you, it's February. Do you have your passport? If you don't have your passport now, we're, you know, we need to be expediting. We need to be putting a rush on it because you should actually apply for this last, the last semester of the year. So now you're late, right? Because even though it says, like Tamara said, 13 weeks processing, us in the industry, we're noticing it's taking way longer than that. And so when I do a passport checkup and I see that you still have not received your passport, one or two things is going to happen, guys. And that's either we're going to, one, reschedule your trip because you're not going to make it, or you're going to you're gonna be riding it on the skin of your chinny chin chin just to see if it's going to come in a few days before you leave i don't like to be stressed out as your travel advisor and i dang sure don't want you to be stressed out just as samantha and tamara does it either so guys if you know you want to go somewhere next year like tamara said now is the time to apply for your passport it's taking way longer than 13 weeks Absolutely. And thank you for that. And we'll have to make sure they have access to your video to kind of walk through that as well. Samantha, what would you like to add to that? <laughs> this has been my nightmare the past like three weeks. Um, I've had clients with a passport stolen, clients that swore they had theirs and then they do not. And yeah, I mean, both of you ladies are correct. It's this is not the time to do last minute international travel. It's impossible. It, it's not, not a good idea. Mm -hmm. It is impossible. So please do not try to make us do the impossible. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't like, I hope that your trip is completely planned, no questions, at least the week mm -hmm. before you go. We should not be talking about your passport five days before you are leaving. It is it is too late and the world's not working like that anymore. But I do want to offer solutions too. So if you are in a horrible predicament, like a stolen passport, please contact your state legislature. They actually can help you. They might not, but they can. So it's worth a, worth a shot. Um, I did have someone just contact the National Passport Information Center. They paid two thousand dollars to get their passport not worth it do you know what you could do with two thousand dollars while you're traveling it is not worth it so um another solution talking when we're talking about pivoting your trip besides um just moving your trip there are places that are you know i'm specialized in europe so there are europe like places all over the country they're solving in california mm -hmm. it is so cute this little dutch town so it Tamara's right. 
there's places in this country that are so worth visiting and you will have just as wonderful as a time. So ask your agent or do your own research to find out where those places are. And it's a really, really nice plan B. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I have to touch on this um, just because passports are such a sensitive topic. Um, I would love for in some method, in some way, for our passports to always be slightly accessible where we see them in our homes. I think that some of the passport issues are coming about because the passport is hidden away in a trunk, in the attic. I haven't used it since the last time I went to Europe or, or to the Caribbean. And I really don't know if I have it or not. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things we have to remember as passport carriers, no, we don't want this to be lying around or stuffed in our purse, but we have to bring it more forward, more accessible yeah. to our everyday lives. Um, I, I think some people treat it like it's a thousand dollar bill <laughs> or something. I really don't know, but it has to be forward. I have quite a few clients that, um, will fully plan with me a, a, a trip and they do not have a clue where their passport is. So one of the key questions going forward we have to ask is, do you have a passport available as of today? And, mm -hmm. and just making that available top drawer, somewhere nice, covered, protected, but not in the upper attic in the basement at your mom's house. We can't do that anymore. We, they have to be available. Okay, that was wonderful, you guys. And thank you for that tidbit. Any more we wanna add to the passport chat? We can move on if we need to. Um, people are sharing small habits that they've adopted when traveling that have made travel experiences better. And I would love for Samantha to tell me a small habit that you've adopted or share with your clients to make their travel experiences better? So I am all about sweet and simple. So anything that can make your life while you are planning to travel or while you are traveling sweeter and simpler, that is what I'm all about. So for me, that is packing. Please use packing cubes. They will save your life. I'm obviously very organized, a planner, and they're the best thing ever. And also, um, a packing hack that I learned, not from me, I learned this, I don't remember where, but um, don't have a, if you're a family traveling, don't have a suitcase per person. Because if you lose one, that one person is without all of their outfits and all of their necessities. So make sure at least every suitcase has a little bit of everyone's stuff so that mm -hmm. no one is just left with nothing if something happens to your luggage. I did meet a client years ago and she told me that with her twin children and her two other children, so a family of six total, um, they would pack a day at a time in most of the suitcases. That does bring up a lot of suitcases, and especially for a little kid, but it allows for them to always have at least one day of supplies right. per mm -hmm. case. I think that's wonderful. Miss Tanya, what would you like to add? So with my travel hacks that I uh, kind of practice myself and share with my clients is even though we get in so much of the habit of packing everything in that check on luggage, listen, I always tell them at least have a day's worth of clothes in your carry on, mm -hmm. have a toothbrush in your carry on, have Absolutely. snacks in your carry on, because I've seen suitcases delayed. I've seen suitcases lost and it makes a world of difference to be able to change into some fresh clothes and at mm -hmm. least have something Mm -hmm. that you can tap into versus everything being in that one luggage. So I think for me, um, that has been my savior and my go-to for myself and my clients to kind of prepare them to just in case, because listen, we like to say, expect the best, but prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's my go-to. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. And it's so true. I mean, luggage gets lost all the time, especially with the the airports now being inundated with travelers and they don't always have the staff and the resources for that. They, look, you guys, at the end of the day, 
the airlines and the airports are doing the best they have with what they have. Um, we experienced a great resignation and that also affected the airport and airline travel. So the fact that they're still in the air and we have a trip going somewhere, we have to be grateful for that. But protect yourself as much as possible. Make sure you're doing your due diligence to make certain you have what you need when you arrive to your trip. Um, I did see an article and I did not include it here, but um, uh, there is a new airline in um, South East Asia that now says, don't pack anything. Order all of your clothing through us. <laughs> Brilliant. They're trying to make certain they have a lightweight plane and more passengers versus luggage. Uh, I don't know how much that would cost, but it is a service to look into. Listen, honey, <laughs> with, these no. hips, with these hips, and no, I'm not. I need to make sure I can fit into my clothes before I get here. And have to, how do I send this back? I done ordered all my clothes and nothing fits. No. I love that. I love that. You know, I think companies are getting just as creative as they possibly can be. If we can solve one problem, we can get more people on the flight. I love it. Okay. Um, so um, those are great habits. I want to add my little habit. I have a little note here. <laughs> I miss place. I have many. Um, I'm a planner as well and try to make sure that I have everything I need without going overboard. Um, I always do something that lends me to having less stress. I always have to pack for my family um, and that's a challenge. So I try to stay as pre-packed as possible at all times. <laughs> That means for me, uh, we have individual toiletry bags that are always in our suitcase. The only thing we swap out are things that are low or just need to be refilled. So that is a great way um, that I have created a little bit of balance in my travel habits. Um, the other thing I've done historically is to stay pre-packed with my luggage. If I know that I'm going to the Caribbean, I am I know I'm going to wear swimwear that I'm not wearing any other time of the year. That I may order from Amazon, shameless plug, Amazon, <laughs> and I may put it directly in my suitcase in the packaging after trying it on. I just keep it there. My beach towel that I have to have, my 70 SPF sunscreen that I may not use locally in town because I'm not out in the sun that much. Those kind of things, I keep those packed in my luggage. All of my luggage gear, all of the packing cubes, I think one of the caveats or the, the strange parts or the struggles that people have with packing is they're looking for the stuff they're supposed to be packing with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it should be there. The compression tights when you go to Greece or to Europe should be in your luggage. The packing cubes have, should be cubed within one another inside of your luggage always ready to go. And plus, I'm one of these people that always think I'm going to get a dream trip like tomorrow. So I got to be ready. I can't be struggling trying to figure out what I'm going to put in that sun hat, those kind of things, always ready to go. Not the essentials for life, but the essentials for travel. Right. That helps me. Um, another thing I want to mention is um, with the passport situation, we always want not only our passports in our uh, on our bodies, um, while at the airport and traveling, we want a copy of the passport within our luggage. Mm -hmm. um, I use just a simple little plastic bag um, that you can get from anywhere. I make copies of a driver's license, health insurance information. I'm one of those moms. I don't care. <laughs> passport, because in my mind, I never know what I may need. I also use emergency contact sheet. Um, but I let the people on the sheet know that they're my emergency contact. <laughs> I also provide them information of where I'm going in case they get a call from my emergency contact sheet. They know to answer. So those are the things that help keep um, me balanced when traveling. OK, moving on to the next um, topic here. Let's see. OK, so um, hotels are doing a really cool thing. Um, and I love a good hotel that offers lots of options. And I've noticed um, since the pandemic that hotels had to pivot quite a bit, especially with the food service part. I'm mm -hmm. also a foodie. This is why this is important to me. <laughs> um, hotels have now created a walk-in self-service that are filled with um, that are creating or recreating the future of hotel mini bars, which I absolutely love. I love the idea of uh, being in New Orleans and maybe not having a drink at dinner and waiting 
uh, for that evening to be able to get a bottle of champagne, but not having to go to a store to do that. So having that accessibility that's right in the hotel uh, for anything from a snack cake to a bottle of champagne is wonderful to me. Ladies, but even do you have though, any input? Right. Even though Tamara in New Orleans, you can find your drink at any store, <laughs> even the water. I can, I can, I can. I'm not so New Orleans. I love, but I'm not a walker and drinker um, because my feet and my brain don't connect after the drink. <laughs> I'm a bedtime drinker. <laughs> So I have my little drink. I, Samantha's laughing at me. And I go to bed. <laughs> but New Orleans is a great city for just that alone. And the shrimp. <laughs> the food, yeah. Ladies, would you like to chime oh in God. on the future of technology in hotels? What do we think about this? I think the future of the technology in the hotels is amazing. Um, even you can see these things in the airport today. When I was traveling back from what airport was that? Um, Miami. I was so astonished to see the cake uh, pastry vending machine. I was like, oh my God, I'm already Lovely. pretty diabetic, but I am so in love with cake. And to see Lovely. this red velvet calling my name, I was like, oh my God. See, this is not good. It is so accessible. I mean, because think about it. If you have a long layover, you're going to get hungry. And you now have the option of not standing in long lines, like she said, going to a store, whatever. You can easily go to a vending machine or something that it's less has less people waiting, get in and get out. I even seen one for sandwiches. So if they're doing these type of things in the hotel, I can only imagine, listen, they have a great marketing plan because they don't want their people to leave. Mm -hmm. great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Samantha, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I totally agree. And, um, you know, COVID was just so hard for everybody. And uh, like Tamara mentioned before, <laughs> all of the travel industry, every part of the travel industry had to pivot how they did things. And I feel like the food industry, really good things came from it actually, like accessibility. So mm -hmm. just the fact that they were able, able to pivot it in a positive way, I am all for that for my clients. I love that, definitely. And accessible, I want that as well. Okay, moving on, let's see. Um, travel gift, favorite travel happy gift or special occasion gift. Um, travel related, y'all. What do you have? What do you love? What have you seen? Well, whenever I do group trips, I try to specialize it and make it uniquely adaptable to my group. So it's always going to vary. It's always going to change. You just have to know your clients. Um, and, and so these things can be a wide array of things. So I, I sometimes do pre-departure gifts or I do gifts during the trip. So literally, it just depends. Like pre-departure could depend on if they're going to the Caribbean. I may gift them towels, water bottles, things I know that they're going to need. Um, sunscreen, chargeable, uh, uh, portable chargers and things of that nature. Things I know they're going to need. Um, and then on the trip, like recently with the group that just got back, I gifted them all lottery tickets and the whole bunch of stuff. Um, and my cruise planner's uh, travel partner she gifted a uh, cologne and perfume for our ladies and we just wanted to make it personable for them and, and so much other stuff but mm -hmm. you know you do these gifts and we all do it with the one thing in mind is that we always want you to remember who us and come back and tell all your friends <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think the greatest challenge in giving gifts to clients or even seeing great travel gifts is that, number one, we always want them. Number two, we always see that this may suit someone else a little bit better. Okay. Samantha, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm stealing that lottery ticket idea. So. Uh, I love that <laughs> That's idea. A great That's great. One. I just want to know if I give it out, do I get commission on the winning? <laughs> oh, I had made the disclaimer already. Like, listen, if you hit, <laughs> we can go right to the casino now. <laughs> just take care of your girl. Even that. if it's just five dollars, you know, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I totally agree. All the stuff that clients could use during the trip is amazing. Um, lately, I have been, 
I love supporting other small businesses. So I really try to use like Etsy or anybody local also to buy my little small gifts. And I've been buying from the same woman on Etsy for about three years now for um, a gift for after the trip. She puts mm -hmm. together. So I just had a bunch of Europe so travelers. So she does like the shape of each state that they went and then does like a cute little airplane, some art for them. So that's mm -hmm. what I've been gifting lately and it, it goes over very well. Yeah. And then supporting other small business owners. So win-win. I absolutely love that. I, I, I'm a big Amazon and I need to check out Etsy. I forget that this is really about the craftsman's marketplace. And I do love the idea of fine crafted things. And I love lottery tickets too. I want one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, one of the things I love to share is um, I, since I work with a lot of men with group trips and things, um, I love to give the gift that most don't think about. Um, men like to veg more than women, obviously. I don't know. Actually, I think it's the other way around, and I'm not going to say that. That's, that's totally <laughs> sexist, maybe. But men get the opportunity to veg more than women. Um, so I love to give um, rare samples of bourbon and little bitty bottles and also cigars, um, mm -hmm. because men have a fine way of putting those two together and making magic. Mm. But there's so many that options idea. available. Um, I um, I saw recently, and it was all the rage last season, I normally don't do camping trips, but I consider it a glamping trip for the straws. Have y'all seen the straws that filter yes. water? I want one of those. I, I want my clients to have those, I mean. But you know, but you know, it's so, so hard to keep up with when you're partying. To get them a straw. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to keep up with though. Tomorrow, when you're partying, you know how many straws I've lost. Those, yeah. Oh my True. god, those metal straws. I was like, you know what? <laughs> this this doesn't work for me. You know, so I get it. I get it. Yes, absolutely. But there's so many great gifts. Um, and I don't think there's ever a top is really about the personality of the client and also the trip that they're heading on or coming back from their experience. Um, I'm just glad that we're able to find so many wonderful things that fits right in. That's beautiful. Right. Okay, so um, I want to get a little, go down a different little spot now. Uh, I would say a rabbit hole, but um, this was a fascinating conversation piece to me. Uh, the 10 most unusual room service requests that hotels have ever received or have received. Now, um, what I love about most hotels now and even resorts is that they kind of allow you to ask them for anything. And if they don't, you didn't book with a travel agent. <laughs> Um, I don't really like working with hotels that have a lot of restrictions on anything. I'm more towards the hotels and resorts that allow me to have some flexibility while understanding that my client ultimately wants the most flexibility and wants to be catered to. Otherwise, they could stay at home. So um, I'm going to briefly talk about a scenario where I was at a hotel and a lovely hotel at that. And I did not feel that the bedding system was, and I mean, the comforter and the sheet sets was really what I wanted. I wanted something just fresh and clean for me. Um, I was ultimately told that that was not a problem. They could bring something right up. They remade the bed. It was not an issue at all. But do you all have any odd, that's as odd as I have. I don't really ask a lot, but I just thought of one and I'll circle back around after you guys um, tell your stories. Do you have any situations or anything that may have been unusual or your clients or yourself may have wanted from a hotel and that you I, received? <laughs> I think that is most important for me. If I, again, if I go in there and I don't feel like it's, it's up to par for me, that is the number one thing that I'm going to request. I mean, here's the thing. I don't know about you guys, but I have blog. So it would behoove you 
<laughs> to make me happy. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and for me, if my bedding is not okay, guys, come on. Mm -hmm. It's the least thing that I can complain about, but it's so mm -hmm. important to me. Mm -hmm. So if they can take care of that, I let bygones be bygones. I'm not mm -hmm. the one to typically ask for anything that's kind of crazy, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm really a chill, laid back chick. You know, I just want to enjoy my stay and get a good night's sleep, period. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Hotel rooms, they matter. They matter. Mm -hmm. And what I love is that being an agent, um, sometimes we've seen so many and we really know the caliber of where it should be. And we're able to either communicate that to our clients or we know just by looking at it ourselves. This is not what this we is not. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Samantha, how would you like to add to that? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I'm pretty darn laid back when I travel. Cleanliness, obviously, <laughs> is something that I care about. But with my clients, I am all for them making any sort of requests. I do not think that should be looked down upon by the hotel at all. They are spending their well-earned money. If they have a weird request, I think they should make that weird request. And if it's impossible, it's impossible. But they should ask. You know, they, this is their time, just like Tamara said, they could stay home, but they did not. They spent their money. And if this is what they want or need, no harm in asking at all. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Know, but y'all know one thing that so I want to read a couple of the, I'm sorry. Oh, Go ahead. I'm sorry, darling. I didn't hear you talk. I think we have a delay, but no worries. I, I also have noticed one thing in educating, especially my new travelers, guys, I got to set that expectation because <laughs> as Americans, we travel with that American mindset and we got to remember when we're foreign, you guys already know. So I have to set the expectation, like if they can't pull it off for you, don't hold them to that mm -hmm. because we're so spoiled as Americans, you know, and we have to keep in mind that other countries operate a whole on a whole different ball game. So just pack your patience and, and just pack a little bit of that, uh, you know, niceness. Don't take that American mentality overseas, please, guys. Because, I mean, they're yeah, not going to understand. Tanya, would you agree that that's something you may not know or understand until you travel to a new destination? I think, I think you're right. I think that a lot of the new travelers don't know. Um, and for me, I kind of I, I kind of would like to bring it back to common sense and also treating people how you want to be treated. Yeah, so I amazing. always set that expectation for my new travelers, because listen, guys, don't call me when stuff pops off and you're locked up abroad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't help you with that. Because so just treat, treat people how you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And if you wouldn't want anybody to um, get mad because you couldn't fulfill a request that wasn't accommodatable, it don't hold it against anybody. Either they're going to try their best to do it or they, like Samantha said, they can't. What's mm -hmm. the harm in asking? But it's how you react after they can't do it. That's Absolutely. what makes the world a difference. So I've, I've, you know, I'm all for it. Asking um, the the most craziest thing I've had, and it's really not crazy, but I had a couple who wanted to get married in Vegas. And even though this is this is an international, but it always sticks with me because he didn't know, guys. He didn't know how to do, what to do, when to do. So okay. it took me as the agent to make those extra requests just pop for them. Mm -hmm. And so I think him saying that those things are options. Now, when he goes somewhere, he's going to now be thinking like, oh, how can I spice it up a little bit? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, all of this plays an important part. Absolutely. I love that. So I'm going to read just, just for giggles, um, some of the list of the survey. Um, this is the, uh, these are the oddest requests of hotels, a uh, diet water, <laughs> melted ice cream, so yeah, that a blowfish. I, I really I wondered if that was for supper or um <laughs> boiled boiled what? bottled water. What? Um I'm still waiting on Amazon to create the container for the boiled bottled water. Uh a cooked fish that the guests bought with them. So 
Yes. Um, I guess they pre-packed that fish. Um, no egg white omelet. A no egg white omelet. That's different. But I guess it's doable. Uh, rice bowl for a dog. Bison and an eggless egg in a shell. I just want to okay. know, viewers, y'all out there watching this show, if you've ever requested something crazy, please put it in Tamara's comments because I'm a little curious now after looking at that list. Like, okay, what are y'all really out here doing? <laughs> really, really. So um, I do have a short story. Um, my mom and nieces, um, twin girls at the time, they were about four years old. I'd taken them to Atlanta, uh, high rise hotel just to hang out for the day while I went to a conference. And I told my mom upon leaving the hotel, don't worry, you know, anything you need, y'all have had lunch and all this stuff, just order room service. Mm -hmm. Okay. I come back about seven hours later and I notice the smell of popcorn and peanuts and candy and all of this stuff. And I kind of look around and I'm like, what? Where did you get all this stuff? And she said, oh, the gentleman downstairs went to the grocery store. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. It is. <laughs> he got Garrett's popcorn. My bill was $89. <laughs> so you can ask for whatever you want. Just be prepared of the bill that comes with it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was so cute. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, I know now that I've, I've got to ask for more stuff. I'm not doing this right. <laughs> okay, so recently in a couple countries, the legal drinking age um, in 21 popular destinations has been dropped to 18 years old. Parents, now Miss Samantha, she has a story about this. Tell us about it. <laughs> Parents, do your research. Um, yes, I just had a couple high school boys, I think they were graduating high school, so probably about 18, talk their parents into letting them go to Ibiza. And if you don't know where Ibiza is, what Ibiza is known for, it is not for a laid back vacation. It is for partying. I mean, you could have a laid back vacation there, but it is known mm -hmm. for partying. Mm -hmm. um, however, I have mixed feelings. So <laughs> I think you should know where your children are going and what they are planning to do. I have a three-year-old boy and I hope he does not want to go to Ibiza when he's 18 years old. Um, however, if you are a family in Europe, in Italy, I have no problem whatsoever with an 18-year-old having a glass of wine, mm -hmm. as long as it's respectful. It's so, such a huge part of the culture. We know that food and, and drink is such a huge part of getting to know different cultures and different places around the world. So experiencing it in that way, I am absolutely for being dangerous, possibly disrespectful or mm -hmm. putting yourself in not a good situation um, that maybe some 18 year olds might do traveling abroad. That is what I'm not for. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what I have to add to that, and I absolutely agree, is that parents, if your children, young children, uh, middle-aged children, teenage or college age, <laughs> want to um, seek adventure and travel, they need a travel agent. Yes. To help discern, even yeah. if you want to be hands off. Mm -hmm. Because I think this is what's happened in your scenario. They want it to be hands off. They book the trip. You need mm -hmm. someone that could be the eyes, the ears, the voice that can help them navigate the location they're going. Mm -hmm. And that also can be your ears and eyes and voice to tell you, hey, you need to know about this because he's never going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's really important. Um, I have known of several parents that just like, I'm just going to buy, buy the plane ticket. They can go. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand that. Um, I think it's unsafe. I think we vi live in a very uh, fickle world. But if we know what to do and how to do it, it can be that much better. But that needs to be with the help of a professional if yes. it's something that a parent cannot do uh, feasibly. So, um, Tanya, what do you have to say about that? I'm done. I I'm off the horse. I mean, 
given the most recent events, guys, I mean, you guys read the travel news like, you know, I read the news and the most recent events like the one where the guy, he had to obviously be drunk, right? He took a cruise and jumped into shark infested waters. They still haven't found him today. Mm -hmm. Like parents, you need to know and set the set the tone for your kids traveling abroad. Mm -hmm. Like you should have expectations. They should know the consequences in in, in of their actions. Um, and and you know, like you said, the parents just want to buy the plane ticket, but are we what what happened what has happened with this generation like this is so weird and i just think how that could have went a whole different directions mm -hmm. it, it it didn't even have to happen so for these countries that lower the drinking limit we know kids don't make good decisions not drunk so can you imagine the decisions that they're making enumerated like this is crazy mm -hmm. and so i kind of wonder like what happens when they take it too far overseas? We know what can happen, but do these do these clients know? Like, hey, if you guys decide to go over there and party, party. Now, listen, they let you, but they didn't tell you if you cross the line what's going to happen. You need to be yes. prepared for that. And please don't call your travel agent when you're locked up abroad. Well, yeah. I was going to, I definitely agree. Um, travel insurance does not tra uh, cover you going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> I can't help you guys. We can't help you. I can call mom. I can call dad, but I'm pretty much done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is the last thing we would ever want to happen. Mm -hmm. These locations that have lowered the drinking age um, destinations, Argentina being one, Australia, Bahamas, uh, legal drinking age is 18. And that has to be noted because there are many day cruises right out of the United States that go to the Bahamas for a day. Right. Yeah. 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Brazil, 18. Canada, 19, with notable exceptions. <laughs> um, Czech Republic, France, we've talked about that a little bit. Um, I think some places you're going to get a totally different experience, but others right. you may get locked up. Yep. So we have to be mindful. We have to be, do to our due diligence. That side. They need to see that side of travel. They because they see the glam and the glitz, but no one is showing the down dirty parts of it when stuff yes. goes the opposite Absolutely. direction. So have to be safe. The safer over sorry. Now, mm -hmm. um, just to segue, we're going back to this passport conversation. Now, the passport authorities have set up the State Department has set up a new way of getting your passports. Now, what we cannot do is all run to these events. There's only a couple of them around the U.S. They are passport fairs. Mm -hmm. What I think they're trying to do, and this is after speaking to someone at the passport administration locally, is make the feeling of getting the passport more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, again, we can only press this so mm -hmm. much sooner than later if you know you have um, children in high school uh, you want them to be able to travel the world give them a passport for christmas mm -hmm. <laughs> okay um give a passport as a gift um these passport fairs are available in certain cities um, i'm going to link here the where these passport fairs are available um, i would imagine the lines are going to be very long and it's going to be a lot of confusion so um, yeah, they, they just the U.S. State Department Texas. has also stated there. Just had one in Texas. Okay, mm -hmm. so doggone, we missed that. <laughs> we missed that one. Um, I, I like the I like the opportunity that they're providing. I just think that sooner is better than later. And if you don't have it now, you need to come up with a pivot plan, a plan, mm -hmm. how to make that happen. And videos are available. Tanya has one, I have one, and either one of us can help you with that, okay? Um, okay, so we're gonna talk about seven less expensive summer beach vacations. Now, um, travel and leisure have their own, but I wanna talk about you all's personal experience. Where are you sending clients that is that's a less expensive summer beach beach vacation? Uh, where are you sending clients or where are you going? Samantha, well, would you like to start? Sure. I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead, Tanya. <laughs> Go ahead, Tanya. <laughs> 
Sorry. Y'all know this delay is horrible. Um, so for Texas, I'll just stick with Texas, right? In the Gulf Coast region. Um, a lot of my clients who want to experience crystal clear water, beautiful water, or just get that beach vibe. We're hitting anything in the Gulf Coast, wherever they choose to go, because the prices is just right if they're not trying to leave the country, right? Um, so for right now, the Gulf Coast is what's up. I love that. I love that. So the Gulf Coast, is it drivable from Texas or are we still flying? So it's drivable. So in okay. Houston, we have Galveston. We have a drive three hours to the west to hit up Corpus Christi. You even have South Padre Island. If we okay. go in I-10 East, then of course you're going to pass through Louisiana. You're going to go through Mississippi and in all of those areas and make it into the panhandle of Florida. Um, even uh, Alabama, they do have uh, a, some type of beach vibe going on in that in that lower part that connects to the panhandle of uh, Florida. And, and so anywhere along that I-10 corridor, you can pick something up. You know, if you want to stay within budget, um, it depends on what your vibe is and, you know, what direction you want to be in. Keep it in mind, guys, we are now in the in the heat of hurricane season. So, you know, we still got to keep our eyes open because anything can pop off, but you still Absolutely. can find somewhere affordable to go during this summer break if you're not trying to break the bank and leave out of the country. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those that don't have a passport, this is this is good information. You can still have that feeling that go. And and like Samantha said earlier, there are other locations around the United States that feel like um, being out of the country that feel that have the essence of Europe. Uh, so that's a great thing to know. So, Samantha, beach vacation. And I'm, before you answer, Samantha, I want to know that we're not talking about cheap. We're talking about less expensive. So this versus that. We're not talking about $500. <laughs> I always uh -huh. say if you only have $500 to travel, you need to take that $500 and figure out how to make $500 more. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because one thing travel is not right now is cheap. Correct. It's less expensive and can be in certain destinations. But we're going to throw cheap out. <laughs> so Samantha, answering that, less expensive beach destinations. So I'm lucky in Southern California. I am your girl for this. If you don't yeah. want to go, yeah, if you don't want to go international, come to Cali. We have mm -hmm. the best beaches. I'm right by Newport Beach, Huntington Beach, Laguna Beach. Go south a little bit to San Diego, Coronado Islands, one of my favorite places ever with Hotel Dell. Go up a little bit to Santa Cruz, Santa Barbara. And just like Tamara said, these are not cheap. We all know California is not cheap at all, but they are less expensive. And there are some pretty good flight deals um, from all over the country to LAX or Orange County, um, just down in Cali. But yeah, our beaches are so beyond beautiful. Um, cold, the water is cold, but if you just like the beach vibe, that's definitely the Cali way to go and some beautiful resorts as well. Absolutely. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, one of my favorite places on earth, on earth, is San Diego. I love it. It is the weirdest thing. I went there and I just fell in love. I was like, how can I, I, I started trying to figure out how can I live here? <laughs> how can I live here? And at the time I was a solo mom. I was like, okay, I'm going to plan, plan, plan. But it's one of my favorite uh, getaway places um, because I think with the culture, the food, the mix of people, and the beaches uh -huh. in the backyard, yep. and the shopping, and did I say the other stuff? <laughs> Being in California is very lovely. I love it, um, and it's definitely better than dusting off my passport. <laughs> and you all both are lucky. Uh, you have Texas, your yeah. water. You have California. Yeah. I'm in Tennessee. <laughs> So to reach any beach destination, I have to get on a plane. And if I had to choose a less expensive beach vacation, I would possibly choose um, Fort Lauderdale. It's easy in, it's easy out. It's not the cost of Miami, but you still have a similar vibe. I also like what we talked about earlier, the moment you want to leave 
Fort Lauderdale, you can get on a day cruise and go right to the Bahamas for mm -hmm. 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the best of all worlds without the cluster of crowds and expenses. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things I like is I don't know the name of the street. I'm going to say it's Beach Boulevard because they all have that. It's one main strip that has pretty much all of the great hotels on it. Um, and everything is pretty much in great walking distance. And I absolutely love, because I'm a foodie, the fact that several restaurants were 24 hours. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. Love that's it. So it's inexpensive. Uh, well, it's less expensive. Uh, I think uh, I would say a long weekend trip there would definitely be under $1,000. So mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorite places. And I hate that I'm not California or <laughs> Texas. Like, I've considered both living in both areas. I'm like, I need to be closer to water, but now I just yes. have water. <laughs> we, have so, we have so much of a vibe here in Texas. So even if you don't do the beach, we have tons of lakes. Listen, guys, I'm a country mm -hmm. girl. I love boating. Mm -hmm. I love driving to the I lake and renting a boat for a day and just hanging out on the water. So mm -hmm. we've got tons of beautiful lakes here in Texas. So you don't have to do a beach vibe you could do a lake house vibe and that's mm -hmm. hey that's a whole nother party guys we're so, totally gonna connect <laughs> yeah you can definitely get your vibe here in texas it doesn't matter um if you want to be beachside or if you want to be lakeside we got it y'all know that. that everything is bigger in texas <laughs> I, I, I keep hearing that i keep i want one of those turkey legs <laughs> i'm coming i'm coming and the cowboys are there Mm -hmm. Uh uh, All no ma'am. Haters, just no, go ahead and drop it in the comments. No ma'am. No ma'am. <laughs> okay. I'm a, Saints, I'm a Saints. I'm a Saints girl here, so gotcha. you know, I love gotcha. Texas, but I'm a Louisiana football fan, so I love that. I love it. It's all the same. It's all. It's all about football. It is. Oh, it's just love. Yes, it okay. So um, we're gonna wrap up soon. We have two last topics. I'm excited about this one because I've already expressed that I am a foodie. The best thing I ate, the best thing I ate at the world's most luxurious hotel. We're going to skip the luxurious hotel part, but the best thing you've had or the best thing a client or customer has had that you've booked for at their resort, their location, your adventure, the best thing they ate, because I'm taking notes over here. I'm taking notes. Miss Tanya, you first. I'm taking notes. What you got? Well, I think the best thing that I'm always seeing my clients order when they go luxury is lobster. They love mm -hmm. lobster. Mm -hmm. So they want to try it in different places um, yes. that they go to. I'm not a lobster girl, but hey, whatever floats your boat and throws your hair back, honey, have at it. <laughs> so I think for my list that I've seen over and over again is they like lobster this, lobster this, lobster that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, Samantha, what about you? So I have two answers to this question. Um, along the seafood train, all of my clients that go to any of the islands in Hawaii are just blown away by the seafood. Obviously, my dad's always had a rule. Do not eat seafood unless you are next to water. <laughs> it's just I love that. Such I like love a, that. Yeah, it's, it's like so common sense, but Thanks. it's very, very, very true. <laughs> So yeah, the seafood in Hawaii, pretty much anywhere on any of the islands. And then um, I also booked Thailand a lot and it's interesting food and a lot of flavors that my clients have never had before. And mm. especially like that street food market vibe in Thailand, in Bangkok is absolutely amazing. And new flavors are so fun and you don't get that a lot. So yeah, the, the foodie scene in Thailand is the place to be. I love that. I, I have heard that. And I've actually sent two clients there years ago uh, before a pandemic. It feels like forever, yeah. <laughs> forever ago. Um, I have not been myself yet, but I have to piggyback anything on seafood. I absolutely mm -hmm. love it. Um, lobster all the way up in Maine, all you can eat lobster joint. The lobsters were six pounds. It was incredible. Wow. And um, all the way to San Diego, lobster. Belize, I had a lobster roll that was about this big. It was mm -hmm. seven bucks, seven dollars. <laughs> 
I was like, are you sure you don't need a tip or something? Like, I feel bad to only give you $7 for this. But it was a great experience. Um, and if I specifically, if I say a luxury hotel out in Vegas at the Aria, um, I, I was having, <laughs> this is so funny. I was having a client consultation in Vegas. It was the weirdest thing. I was there taking, uh, I was uh, actually, um, I did a group trip and one of the young ladies asked me to come to the trip with, I'm like, does this ever happen? Like, like in real world. So I ended up going on the trip that I booked for these clients and, and they were doing their thing. Cause I'm much different from they are. And I'm just the planner. Like I'm just here. Um, I ended up going to, um, a little location, a shopping location. Um, I met someone there and he wanted to talk more about travel over food. And I'm like, Okay, <laughs> go to this place at the Aria, and they had lamb meatballs. Yum. I, it was only four, and I kept looking at the bowl like, am I supposed to be talking to him or eating the meatballs? Like, <laughs> I was so conflicted. I did not book the trip. It's the only time I've actually failed in my career because the lamb meatballs were to die for. <laughs> uh, I'm heading to Vegas um, actually in a couple of weeks, and I'm praying. The lamb meatballs are still on the menu. <laughs> you guys, terrible. But anyway, that's my luxury hotel experience. Um, and we're going to round out by talking about something quite serious. And I hate to shift gear gears so quickly, but um, bed bugs are driving the news stories crazy. I'm seeing them on TikTok being documented. Um, I'm seeing them on Instagram. Everyone is talking about traveling and with bed, not. Nah. Let me see. Everyone is talking about traveling, not with bed bugs, because they're not with me, <laughs> but with the, with the sighting of bed bugs in their hotel rooms. Now, I want to first say something, and then late, I'm going to let you all chime in. Um, there is a couple belief systems out there, and uh, we read this article about bed bugs, so we know about them, and we've heard about them, and we've they've been around forever. Um, I want to say that one way to prevent from having a small issue with bed bugs, in my opinion, especially at the hotel or resort level, is to communicate with a travel agent. Now, I know we're travel agents and y'all, yes, we want everyone to come to us for service so we could share how we navigate this world of travel a little bit differently mm -hmm. with experience mm -hmm. than you would. But at the same time, we hear about these things directly in our community chats. Mm -hmm. Which hotels, which resorts have problems with this? Where is this more of a problem? What to be expected? What your rights are as a consumer when this happens? Mm -hmm. That you, if, if you went out and booked yourself, you may not have that kind of coverage, okay? Um, for me, in my opinion, if my client experienced this, there's no changing of sheets. There's no changing of beds. I need a whole nother room on another floor or another hotel. Mm -hmm. And I am pushing for that. I'm advocating for them. Now, we know they're animals, they're bugs in the bug family. There's no way to rid completely of them. But the reason why they're such a hot topic now is because travel is on a rise. Mm -hmm. Movement is happening very quickly. Hotels and resorts are having to turn over very quickly. And honestly, and this is ladies, I'm sorry if I say something that offends, but people are bringing these bad bugs from their home. <laughs> exactly. This is not just a hotel issue. Hotels are getting the heat from it, uh -huh. but this these bed bugs came from a house, uh -huh. a garage, a nasty sofa, a, a community dorm. Right. This is not just a hotel issue, and we can't forcibly blame the hotel, but we do have rights to what needs to happen if there were a sighting. Now, I, regardless of the hotel, I don't care how many stars. I don't care. My first response, I need white sheets. Yes. I don't yes. do Airbnbs yes. for this yes. reason. 
Um, and I have nothing against the, the Airbnb world, except they don't do business with travel agents. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that says a lot. Yes. We are the eyes, the ears, the know-how, the, the experience. And we have the resources and tools to get you out of that situation. You rent an Airbnb for a week with bed bugs. Guess what you got? A bill mm -hmm. and bed bugs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have nothing against that. We can find you a lovely home that's accredited, approved, that's all the things are checked off. It okay. just has me on Airbnb right. website. Okay. Now the so is, I'm off the rampage. The thing is, <laughs> the thing is a lot of people don't want to, they look at the Airbnb prices and they look at uh, our luxury villa prices and they're like, I don't want to pay that. But I'm like, okay, well, whatever you get is what you get. We can't help you with that when you go the Airbnb route. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a learning experience and you're right. Hotels are not the only ones that suffer from this. You know, I had a horrible story from a young lady I had on an interview on one of my podcast episodes. And man, her bed bug story was horrible that she experienced on a cruise. And I was just flabbergasted, like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, and and she had to fight her own battle because it wasn't booked with an agent. It was her experience in that present moment. But thank God the cruise line made it okay for her, but it gave her a very bad taste that she would never, ever want to experience that line again. You know, so. I totally understand. I totally understand. It just, sometimes it pays a little forward to have someone that can fight for you. Mm -hmm. And I all, I tell every client, and I know you ladies do too, I am here for, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. a 1-800 number. I'm not an email address. Uh, it, worst case scenario, if you had to call me, I would answer. We're you know, advocates. You don't want to get that far. Um, but I'm here for you. And that is when people think, oh, I'm getting a deal. What What are you actually paying for? Mm -hmm. Bed bugs and a sandwich. <laughs> Bed bugs and being stuck. Um, yeah. And I'm hearing incredible stories. I, I just read one yesterday of a gentleman that was told he had an allergic reaction to the bites of bed bugs in his Airbnb. Not just Airbnb people. This is all over the place, but it pays to be connected to someone that can call. Samantha and Tanya and I can pick up the phone and call the BDM business development manager at the hotel. Yep. Hello, this is Tamara. This is Tanya. This is Samantha. We have a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the 1-800 number, not the front desk, not the manager. This person is with us. They just happen to work mm -hmm. at the hotel mm -hmm. and we can tell mm -hmm. them, Hey, we have a serious problem. This is, I can tell them these, these, <laughs> this is my honeymoon clients. <laughs> you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Not only do I need a different room, I need a free dinner. I need yeah. a basket. I need a, I, I, ladies. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you're absolutely right. Via Priceline. <laughs> via I am so, let me knock on wood. Let me find some wood real quick. <laughs> you know, I have not had any clients. Thank you, Father God, that has experienced anything like that yet. Uh, and I don't even want to manifest that. But right. um, but but if 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 it ever happens, you know, we know how to ruffle some feathers and get mm -hmm. some things moved. And that is the benefit of booking with a travel agency advocate, guys, because we are connected to the world of travel. So I am grateful to know that we can pick up the phone and we can call the who's who in the industry to make some things happen. Um, and then these are these are the tidbits that you guys are not connected to. These are the tidbits that you don't know about. And we worked for this. We put in that sweat equity for this. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about booking something on your own, think about the benefits you will have in case something does go wrong when you're booking with um, a land and sea travel agency expert, guys. We got your back. And it doesn't matter 24 seven while you're traveling. We're always on the ready. That's just how I am with my clients. So, and like I said, I'm so grateful. Nobody has experienced that yet. And and, and then I also think about it's important where we send our people to, right? Yeah. So I make it my business. I'm not doing anything under four stars. 
because those reviews are going to come back the way I need them to come back. Mm -hmm. So I make it my business to stay within that four star, you know, and, and we should be okay. And I think if customers always knew what that means to be able to be four stars, there are credentials that the hotel, the resort has to go through in order to have that level, that number associated with them. So you have thing twofold. You have an agent that has done their due diligence to practice the art of sales of travel and making certain you're advocated for at all times. And they're only choosing resorts or hotels, accommodation, tour groups, tour operators that operate within a certain standards that they've already been tested on. Yes. Mm -hmm. The two together match your main in heaven. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you all. And I all I tell every client this every, whenever that total comes out, if you don't have this to waste, you need to use this towards someone that works in your security, your benefits uh, that's on your team. If you can't waste that total dollar amount for your, your travel for the entire year, don't book it on your own for the entire year. I, I get dentists that are accredited. <laughs> I don't get, I don't sell my own house. I get a realtor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Even though we know you could put your house on a website and sell it. And don't you buy your travel where you buy your toilet paper. Hmm? Don't buy your travel where you buy your toilet paper. That, ooh, please don't. <laughs> She's talking about Costco, BJ's, and Sam's Club. Oh, I didn't say it, honey. Oh, I, I got this started. <laughs> I did. Discount travel. Oh my God, the pandemic exposed a lot, guys. It exposed. Mm -hmm. it did. Oh, it and, exposed you know, I'm so happy those companies disconnected their 1 800 number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mine was still on. My phone was still on. I still have people traveling very carefully. Yep. Yep. Vineyard in New York. We're going to go someplace where no one else is. We're going to go out to Page, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. Miss Samantha, last word on bed bugs. <laughs> yeah. So I think I just want to chime in a little bit about the do it yourself, which obviously we don't want you to do. I love the word advocate being talked about so much. That's exactly what we are. But when you're thinking of the Yelp and the Trip Advisor, where you all go to do your own research, the only people who write reviews are people that had a spectacular experience or a horrible experience. No one in the middle writes reviews. So you are not getting an accurate representation of anything on any of those sites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We can see things that you cannot see. And that is such a huge benefit, like the BDM that we can talk to, like travel agent forums that we have, different Facebook groups, host agencies, other agents that we talk to all day, every day. It sounds like kind of braggy or whatever, and maybe it is, but we know better than you. This is what we do all day. And this is what we love to do and we're passionate about. And we want you, I always say to all my clients, my goal in my life is to help as many people travel the world as possible. Obviously in a safe, fun um, way that has amazing experiences with your family or friends or loved ones or whatever. And I promise you, it will be better if you do it with me or any agent, not any agent, the three of us, it will be better <laughs> if you pick the three of us to help you rather than doing it yourself. And I know a lot of people can do it themselves and have a good experience, but the advocate piece is what you will always be missing. So it is just always smarter to have a professional helping you. Yep. Absolutely. And I'm going to conclude by saying two things. Um, this has been a wonderful experience. I've loved the moments and I know there's some key nuggets and takeaways that anyone could use to add value to their plans of traveling going forward. Uh, we're going to link all of the the contact information in the description box. So you can reach out to Samantha, you can reach out to Miss Tanya, or you can reach out to myself. Um, but I am gonna leave this with you all. Um, the average, to plan the average week long trip, it takes about 40 hours of your time. Now I would never, Samantha would never, and Tanya would never spend 40 hours doing your job 
why would you spend 40 hours doing hours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it, you guys. It's been a blessing. These ladies are tremendous. Thank you so much for all of your commentary. I have enjoyed <laughs> it. We love you all. Safe travels, everyone. We're signing out. Bye.